Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. Join. Hello and welcome to Keith Sports and thank you very much if you're just joining us on tonight's show. He battled kidney disease and has successfully had a transplant and he now wants to give back through setting up a kidney foundation. John Bass would be our guest on tonight's Keith Sports and he will talk to you about this foundation that he wants to set up. Scorpions coach Tom Samfield has unveiled his squad to face Algeria in the Africa Cup of Nations last round of qualifying matches and we will bring you updates of that as well. Bottrop defended their inter-school athletics championship crown for the second time in a row and Nusrat are the most improved side because they came in second. That's quite an impressive performance from Nusrat. This and many more would come on tonight's Q Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. Time to bring you sports on this channel. I am Umudu Gajaga and thank you very much if you're just joining us. On tonight's Q Sports, after being diagnosed with kidney failure, John Bass underwent six months of dialysis treatment before finally getting a kidney transplant. And he's here in the studio to talk about a foundation to raise awareness about kidney problems across the globe, not only in the Gambia. And I also have some gentlemen with me in the studio, Malam Bojang is somebody who is known in Gambian circles when it comes to youth matters. But today he's here to talk about a different issue. And also somebody was behind the donation and also helping John to get overseas treatment. Vincent Paul Mendy is also with me in the studio. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to the studio. First, Mala. Thank welcome. you. Thank you, Gajaga. And uh, it's a pleasure being here. John. Thank you, Mr. Gajaga, for having us here. I know that's been a long journey. Yeah, sure. And, and we'll have to talk about a lot. A long and difficult journey. Journey. Yeah. Vincent, yeah, welcome to the studio. Okay, thank you to Mr. Gajaga for welcoming us here to this show. Thank you so much, um, gentlemen. Malang, let's start with you. Um, we're talking about a foundation, a kidney foundation. Not much is known about kidney failure, kidney disease in the Gambia. What are you guys trying to put together to raise awareness? Um, thank you very much uh, once again, um, Gajaga. Um, Good evening to the viewers um, of this segment of um, Q Sports. Um, well, basically, as you introduced, um, I am Malang, um, been part of the um, John Bass Kidney Foundation, which is in the orphan. Um, basically, um, if you could remember, um, John um, was diagnosed with um, a kidney disease um, or a kidney failure some time ago um, here in the Gambia. And uh, before that, um, John is a footballer. Uh, he plays football for Becoming United and prior to that he plays for other um, first division teams. So when he was realized or he has realized that he, he was diagnosed with such a kind of a disease, um, it was kind of a, a, a trauma to him, um, not only him but um, to his family, um, to, to the entire football circle. So there was a need at that time to, to come up and help him to, to get an overseas treatment. Um, as these kind of diseases are not um, cured here. So you would need um, somebody to help you to go outside and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and have that cure, um, that cure. So that was something that was very difficult for, for him and uh, for his family and the entire football circle. So, but unfortunately for him, and um, you know, he had to not only have the monetary art aspect of it, but he was fortunate to have somebody to, to donate part of his life which I think we are glad to have him also on this platform. Um, so when he was lucky to have that, um, we managed to, to send him to India. So when he went to India, unfortunately, the surgery was a success. Um, the, this was in him all along um, when he was diagnosed with such a disease because he was going for dialysis at um, the RVTH or EFSTH. And uh, he realized that there is a lot of challenge, um, not only people having that, you know, help or support um, to go out there uh, to have an overseas treatment. But also it was a challenge for people to have that um, so much knowledge with regards to this kind of um, illnesses within. So he thinks it is important to come up with something um, that would kind of serve as a platform 
um, for not only the school going children, but you know, the athletes that are, we are going to focus most on um, to raise that awareness within them, um, that is the footballers, the, the, the athletes, you know, the medics within. So these are all important aspects of things that he thinks um, you know, he could come in and intervene and share his story, his part of story um, to those, um, that kind of people. So basically when I was informed about it, you know, by his head coach, um, Modlami Nyasi Chali, so I think it is important that we join hands together and uh, come up with this foundation, which we name as John Bass Kidney Foundation, GBK, uh, JBK Foundation, um, to be able to serve as a platform um, for the people of the Gambia and even beyond, as you said, um, to raise that awareness within um, the people that we have around. So, so basically, this is the idea. He was diagnosed. He has a challenge. You know, the entire football circle has a challenge. You know, it was difficult for him, but fortunately, it was easy for him compared to others. So he thinks that there needs to be a platform to help to raise that awareness um, so that the, the trauma that he has to go through um, wouldn't repeat uh, within um, to others that are around him. So that is why we, we came up with the foundation um, to shut up and kick it running. Thank you very much for your time. And now let's move to the man of the moment. John, you know, we don't want to remind you of some yeah. of the traumas that you've sure, gone through. Sure. But um, basically, as a footballer, a defender for Bekama United, I've watched you play. Uh, fans appreciate you. You have been doing fantastically well for your team. And all of a sudden, to be diagnosed with a kidney problem, um, t tell us about a little bit about the journey, uh, what it all unfolded. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gadega, and greetings to the viewers. Um, yeah, it was really um, a difficult time for me and for my family, even for my teammates. Yeah, it was really very difficult because um, when I was diagnosed, before I was diagnosed um, of this um, kidney failure, um, we were preparing for, for the FA Cup final with the Gambia Armed Forces. And so that was when I started, I mean, realizing some changes in my, in my body. And then, but then I didn't know that it was my kidney that has a problem. And then, so, well, well, the game was almost, you know, up and then we had to prepare and then because some of our players had, had traveled. So I was the only defender available. So I, you know, that, that was how I managed to, you know, w I mean, keep it up and then play the final, you know. But after playing the final, after a week or two, you know, I realized that, you know, I mean, this is getting too much. And so one day coming back from training, I, you know, I, w I passed by the health center, I mean health center, and then I saw the doctor there and then he told me that I'm looking at the signs, you know, something might be wrong with your kidneys. So he advised me to go for further scanning, and then which I went, which I did. I did scanning on on two occasions. Yeah, I, I also went to the MRC, the Medical Research Council, and then they also advised that you know something might be wrong with, be wrong with my kidneys. So I'm looking at the signs, and then so they all, they um they they also advised me to go for further scanning, and then after take the reports to um, Banjul. So upon arrival at Banjul EFSTH um, um, Hospital, um, I met with um, the nephrologist there, um, Dr. Sandra. Then after looking at the, res the results, and then she said that you know my kidneys, both my kidneys have been damaged. You know, and then it was you know, a big blow for me because um, prior to my illness, um, you know I had this national call to represent the Gambia versus Togo, and then you know I was you know I was I mean getting ready and then preparing myself for that game. And then all of a sudden, you know, this thing just hit me. That could be quite disturbing. Yeah. You were ready yeah. to play yeah. for your national team. Yeah, it was, it, was like, team. it was It was like, I mean, just two weeks before we resumed training. And then that was when this thing came up, you know. But then to me, I didn't know it was my kidney. So I was thinking, okay, I will recover before we start training. The training. You know, and then but day by day, you know, the signs keep coming. And then it's, you know, that was when I knew that, I mean, I can't make it. And then so I, I called one of my brothers and he's respons responsible for my Facebook page. And I told him that, I mean, I think this has to go viral. And then we have to call the necessary authorities um, to let them know that, I mean, I can't make the game. And then so that was how, you know, we get back, we got back to, to Sang. And then we, we, we I told my coach, Mola Minyasi, and then it was really very sad and very much difficult, difficult. And so I went back to the hospital and then the, the doctor advised that, you know, I should start dialysis, I mean, immediately because it was very serious. You know, it's not that, I mean, like, like only one kidney was, I mean, had a problem, but both kidneys, I mean, they were totally damaged. And so I have to accept it. So that was it. But, but it was really very difficult for me and my family. 
and even my teammates, you know, they were, I, was, I mean, everybody was like, because when the news went viral on, on social media, you know, everybody kept calling, what is wrong, what is wrong, you know. But I had to accept it. Yeah, I had to accept it. After all that you've gone through, now I understand you're no longer playing football. What is happening in your life? Well, you know, I mean, in life, you can never tell, you know. There are certain things that come your way. I mean, the only thing is you have to do is, I mean, you have to quit certain things and then start focusing on something else. And then for me, um, when I was diagnosed and then had this treatment, I, kn I knew that, I mean, it, it, it was going to be very difficult for me to play again because, and then, well before the surgery, you know, I had advice from, from the doctors, from the nephrologists, you know, that you might play again, but there are certain things that you have to avoid. But looking at those things, I mean, the things that I have to avoid, avoid yeah. it's, it's, it's so risky that, I mean, it's even better I quit, you, quit you know. Again. But then, who knows? It, that, that all depends on my recovery, says the doctor. And then he says, it depends on how well, how, how, how soon I recover and, and then how well I'm strong. strong. But if I'm strong enough, I can play again. So, maybe... Well, I will just reserve that for uh, now. How are you dealing with the nostalgia of football? Because quitting something that you love must be very difficult. I'm that, missing, that's a big I'm, decision I'm, in life. I'm, I'm missing this game a lot. I'm missing this game a lot. You know, sometimes I sit at home watching games. You know, uh, you know, but well, I'm but I'm proud of myself anyway because, like, as we have come up with this foundation, um, it's just to create awareness and then make sure that you know, I mean, we reach even, I mean, as wide as the, I mean, the whole country and even worldwide, as you said it. Yeah, because, you, you know, this is it. We, we are in a dear time of need, you know, because, like, for me, looking at, I mean, what I've passed through and the opportunity that I've got to, I mean, to travel abroad, it's not everybody that's going to have it. You know, people have, people have been there at the hospital having, re receiving treatment for, like, f or four or five years. You know, I just came there for, like, I mean, just a few months and then I got the chance to travel. But then some are, some are still there. You know, we don't have to be selfish. We, don't, I mean, we, are, we are trying to, you know, to, to make a way so that, I mean, people will come out and then support them. Some are there, they have the money, they don't have the donor. Some don't have donor, they have the money. But they cannot travel because, of, I mean, you, you need both to travel. And then, so we are calling on everybody, I mean, to come out and then, you know, you know support and save a life. I think that is more important. You know, because looking at the Gambia here, the health sector is, you know, is not encouraging. You know, so we need to, we need to, and it's also a challenge to the to the Ministry of, of, of Health, and then to for them to try to double up in the in the in the, in the health sector, because looking at these people, you can, you can see someone, you know, who who I mean, you, he will look, he or she, the person will look healthy, you know, but why it's something is wrong with him? With the person, you know. So and then I'm also appealing to the general public, you know. I mean, for people to be trying to go for for regular checkups to the hospital because sometimes you don't know. You know, Gambia is you know it's a it, uh, it's a little country. So if we have in this 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 problem of kidney and other other diseases for how long? It's on a, it's only going to you know affect us. You know because when I went for treatment, I mean coming back, I went back to the hospital uh, in Banjul, and then I, I met with my doctor. But the, the the first thing she told me that she told me, John, look. Now it's almost every day we have new patients complaining of kidney problems. So, so, so judging from that, you know, where are we heading to? You know, so I would just want to it's appeal a to everybody. Health concern. Yeah. So we have to be very careful on, on how do we we take care of ourselves and then you know observe our diet properly mm -hmm. and then so that we live a much healthier life. Okay, Vincent. Yeah. yeah. On a more final note, I would also want to advise people like giving out something in your body like a kidney is not something like big or or, or life-threatening thing because you you are going to save a life i think the most important thing is to save somebody's life because as for me like we are sitting here four of us you mm. couldn't like you couldn't point a hand you say vincent is having one kidney <laughs> because i'm i'm healthy like <laughs> like everyone here yeah. so i would advise people like when when you had somebody like having a kidney problem and you know that you could donate, please don't don't yes, waste do. no time. Yes, mm -hmm. just go there and try to save a life because it's the most important thing. Maybe God give us these two kidneys for for this situation. Like mm -hmm. like if you have a problem with the other, you could donate the other. So I will always advise people to go and help and save a life because it's the most important thing. We will advise also each and every person to go and check him or herself to know the kind of health condition he is or she is. Yeah, thanks. That's very important. Um, there you get it. Um, quite inspirational messages and encouraging messages.
is all health concerns. Sports has a connection with health, because if you're not healthy, you cannot engage yourself into any sporting activities. I'm afraid, gentlemen, this is where we have to leave it. And thank you very much for your time. And thank you for coming to um, Q Sports. Thank you, very much. All right, thank you. Q Sports. Q Sports. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us after hearing those inspiring stories about John and his um, kidney failure recuperating, now trying to set up a foundation. Let's move on to our next story and it's about the Gambia national team. Scorpions coach Tom Samfield has unveiled his squad to face Algeria in the last Africa Cup of Nations qualifying match series next week. And we will bring you some highlights of that press conference where he talked about some notable absentees and the reason why those players are not included in the squad. Some are through because of suspension and some are in the squad for the first time. The selection was, to be honest, not so easy. Uh, I think you all follow international football and you notice that uh, we have some, uh, some players who are not available for, for different reasons. We have a few injuries. Um, and we have also two players who are banned with yellow cards. Uh, I just checked, five from starting 11 against Algeria are not available, so it will be almost half new squad who face Algeria in the away match uh, if you compare it with the first home uh, match against them. Uh, the first four matches, the Algeria match, uh, Togo and Benin, um, you notice that I'm a coach who likes the stability in the team, who likes to keep confidence in the players, who know uh, what to expect from the coach and the system. Today, uh, we know that we have to make some changes and uh, it isn't easy because the players will arrive all on Monday in camp, but Monday late. Uh, that means on Tuesday we will be able to train twice, on Wednesday we will train one time and on Thursday we will fly let me also very short say we go to Casablanca for a camp and then we're going to fly from Casablanca on Thursday to Algeria uh, where we train in the evening quarter to nine at match time in the stadium and the game is in Blida, not in Algiers, but in Blida, uh, about an hour driving from Algiers. So that's the plan, two training sessions on Tuesday in Casablanca, one on Wednesday, one small training session in the stadium, pre-match uh, training in Blida on Thursday evening and Friday quarter to nine we will uh, be ready for the battle against uh, the national team of uh, Algeria. Game is quarter to nine, maybe important information, in Algeria it's very cold quarter to nine, sure in the desert at the moment the day temperature is around 20-19 degrees but the nine temp night temperatures drop to three and four degrees so uh, we can expect a temperature of match time around seven eight degrees uh, okay, it's European temperatures, but we have to be also prepared for that. This is the first time in history of Gambian football that the national team, the senior national team, can qualify on the last match day for a major tournament. Uh, in the past, uh, Gambia was once close by, but had to play still playoffs. This is the first time that one game will decide. So it's a game with a lot of tension, with a lot of hope, a lot of expectations, but it will be also a very difficult game. We are um, in, the, in the back of the start grid, uh, if you look to car racing. We have to pass first uh, two opponents uh, to be in that second spot to qualify, so it won't be easy. Uh, we are going with the ambition to do all we can uh, to make history. Um, but to make history, we have to write uh, twice history. It's exactly 36 years ago that Gambia won their last game away from home in a qualification, competitive match. 1983, March 1983, Gambia won in Mauritania in a qualification round. And that's the last away victory for Gambian football and even the only away victory for Gambian football in history. So we need to go to Algeria um, to, 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 to win for the first time in 36 years. And then, let me also, because there is some confusion and I don't blame you because it's uh, quite difficult, we uh, have to count on a draw between Togo and Benin. In any other case, we are not qualified. So we need to win 0-1, 1-2, doesn't matter the result, we need to win if we want to be qualified. And in that case, if we still want to be qualified, 
Togo of Benin, Togo has to end in a draw. The moment Benin wins from Togo, even if we win 10-0, we are out. The more now in athletics, Botrop defended their inter-schools athletic championship crown for the second time in a row. Nusrat are the most improved side coming behind Botrop in second place. And Babu Karsi was our eyes and ears at the Independence Stadium. He can bring us some highlights of the inter-schools athletics championship finals. We do win it for the first time this year. and definitely today we designed for the fact that um, the DTU, CCU are the sponsors it shows so much the three-day event brought together more than 60 schools from the length and breadth of the country in the upper basic and senior secondary schools category the annual championship is organized by the Gambia Secondary School Sports Association with the Gambia Teachers Union Cooperative Credit Union GTU, CCU sponsoring the 2019 championship. Botrop Senior Secondary School reclaimed the yearly crown for the fourth consecutive year after scoring 276 points. They went home with a giant trophy and a cash prize of $100,000. In the Upper Basic School category, Latikunda Upper Basic School, aka Plazas, scored 338 points to retain the title, going home $50,000 rich. Alhaji Dudu Kapijuf is the president of the Gambia National Olympic Committee and also doubles as the president of the Gambia Athletics Association. He shared his impression with us whilst watching draw talents in the track and field events. I have seen some of the best young athletes in this country locking hands together, and especially the female athletes. I am really impressed because this was a major problem in this country to have female athletes. But I think the uh, one like Gina Bass and other athletes has motivated I think more athletes to be involved in athletics. And primary and secondary school sports is the root of sports in this country. Not only athletics, but all other sports. Because without organizing competition of this nature, it will be impossible for Gambia to produce talented athletes. And I am grateful to the secondary school sport and to the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education for encouraging schools to participate in these competitions. Martin Gomez, the president of the Gambia Teachers Union, who doubles as the principal of Botrop Kinderdorf Secondary School, described the 2019 championship as a well-organized one. Organization is something very new. It's an innovation that is that really delights my heart. It is, it is something that we have been looking forward to for the past many years. I am very glad that it is possible this time for them to implement it. This is what happens internationally. You can see that none of the PTS are in the main bowl this time. They are all outside. It's only the athletes that are allowed in, and they are ushered out after their events. The spectators are enjoying it because they are seeing every corner of the field. And I think this is what we were looking forward to. So I really want to commend them. They deserve a lot of commendation for this type of organization. For his part, the president of the Gambia Secondary School Sports Association, Ismail Asise, said the association is working hard to tap raw talents across the country, thereby giving the opportunity to the GAA to scouts for talents for national use. And since when we, start, we amended our rules, we have seen a lot of new surprises coming up. Um, it used to be you know, the big three or the big four. Then it used to be Gambia High, St. Augustine, and then maybe Muslim or Botrop. But now it is no longer that. You know, any school anywhere can win this competition. And we, when we amend the rules, and then you know, the issue of transfer was catered for. We have no issue whatsoever regarding transfer this year. There was no problem at all. Because we have transfer window that starts from June 1st to 30th October. You know, and then if you transfer after that, then you are not qualified to participate. And a lot of schools have been disadvantaged with that. And then also you must spend eight years in the system in order for you to qualify. More than eight years, that is from grade seven to grade 12. More than eight years, you are not qualified to participate in our champion. It is, uh, our uh, mandate stops at this level. We are developing grassroots sports. We, are, we scout for them, for the GAA, Gambia Athletic um, you know, Association. But then after that, it is, we don't have um, any say on them again. It is the GAA who's supposed to be here 
to identify and then organize um, trials for athletes so that at least they can go and compete for a junior championship you know, in an international scene. But for us here, you know, we would make sure we bring them from the various corners, length and breadth of this country, and then the GA will pick it up from here. That's all we have for you on tonight's Q Sports, and thank you very much for watching. Keep on sporting, and bye for now. Q Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. 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 Join the Modu Kaja.